Hello in Bullock. My name is Sachin, and I work for the Geoscience and Geomaritime Division of the PESPA Committee based in the Fiji Islands. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to allow me to talk about our Digital Lab PESPA initiative, uh, which is derived from the existing Digital Lab Africa and Digital Lab Australia projects. So to start off some background, what is SPC? SPC is the principal scientific and technical organization supporting sustainable development for our 36 number countries uh, in the Pacific Islands. And the division that I work for, the Geoscience Energy Maritime Division, works in diverse areas such as uh, maritime uh, transport boundaries, ocean and coastal geoscience, disaster risk reduction, uh, renewable energy, and climate change. And as you would note, uh, most of these work areas has the potential to benefit widely from the ODC ecosystem uh, because due to pandemic, we are not able to uh, deploy teams on the ground or to take field surveys. So a lot of work can be done remotely using uh, temporal space and data. So what is digital lead test week? Uh, the test week project uh, aims to support the development of operational air observation infrastructure. It will take a decades worth of uh, uh, openly accessible satellite data, remote sense data, and able to uh, inform our member countries around challenges such as climate change, food security, and disasters. So we hope the solution will help us understand our environment and uh, better prepare us for challenges such as sea level rise, uh, disaster preparedness and response, and also look at uh, issues such as uh, crop yield and potential impacts by weather and climate change. So uh, we hope that uh, this product will empower uh, our leaders and give them ready to use decision ready products in order for them to make better decisions around sustainable development and uh, fulfill their SDG requirements. So the project, as I said, is quite new. Uh, we just started earlier this year in March. And uh, over the last few months, uh, we have mostly been engaged in the stakeholder engagement. And uh, we have engaged a wide range of stakeholders to ensure that uh, the product will be fit for purpose and uh, the solutions and products that are derived from the EP will uh, meet the development goals of our countries. So as of this month, uh, we have uh, done a number of workshops with our country stakeholders uh, and uh, are de developing a uh, roadmap based on the needs. And on the technical side, we also are uh, putting some effort into uh, putting up a prototype for ODC for two pilot countries, uh, mostly focused on ingesting central own data and the reproduction that. Going forward, uh, based on the output from the prototype, uh, we will be uh, developing some elevates demonstrating products for the countries. And then based on the feedback, we'll be doing a business case, which will inform how the project goes forward in the future. So the current objectives the last six months have been to understand the needs and priorities of our countries, look at some of the early wind cases that we can tackle this year, and uh, what are the immediate needs are. Uh, we are also uh, ingesting indexing data into ODC for a couple of countries and uh, building some products. And all of this will fit into the business case going forward. So SPC is not working in isolation for this. We have engaged with the governments and the relevant ministries of uh, four countries. Two of them are Balkonic Islands, large islands, such as Fiji and Vanuatu. The other two are Eto Islands, such as Marshall Sakoda. As you would know, the challenges around Eto's is different from larger Balkonic Islands. Uh, we have also involved academia with our regional university, University of the South Pacific, along with uh, technical agencies and oversight agencies such as uh, CEOs, GA, GEO, and NOAA. So the five countries that we're working on right now is Vanuatu and Fiji, and they will focus 
for them are mostly around crop yield, agricultural monoprene, flooding, uh, river extraction, coastal change, and radar based uh, deforestation and water change detection. So, uh, a, a common issue that we have in the, the, the test pit is that people uh, do not understand that we have a lot of open data, resources data for the test pit. The misconception is that we do not have data for the test pit. So, a quick analysis by Central Set shows that we have terabytes of data over the last decade uh, for the region. However, the challenge that we face is that uh, this data is underutilized uh, for the post-test analysis and also for decision making because of lack of uh, computing infrastructure, internet infrastructure. Uh, it's not feasible to download gigabytes of tiles into a GIS environment and do analysis on top of that because of the bandwidth restrictions. And also there's a lot of awareness that uh, this data exists. So there's no investment in long-term infrastructure. Uh, the other big challenge on the technical side is that uh, we face the issue of cloud cover, we have very high cloud cover, uh, especially for smaller atolls and islands. So, yeah. So at the moment, uh, we are focused on uh, band set eight and central two, and of course, central one. So central one in the data is of particular interest to us because it will uh, counter the cloud cover issue that we face. Just to give an example of how much of common cloud cover is, uh, you can see that uh, for a particular area in Vanuatu, uh, for both Central 2 and Lancet 8, uh, for imagery taking on the same time, uh, it's lots of clouds, so you can't actually see the roads uh, or the, the agriculture fields easily, whereas with Central 1, uh, we don't have to worry about cloud cover. Uh, and this is done by Dr. Brian Killer from CEOs, so is that uh, uh, for the same country in 2020, there's about six months of data missing or unuseful data for Lens at 8 because of cloud cover, and for 72, it can go up to four months. Uh, the issue is compounded when you go down to atoll levels uh, for some of the smaller airline islands such as Marshalls and Tonga, the data is entirely missing throughout the year. So uh, where is central one is always consistent for us and we can use it at any time that we please. So henceforth, uh, we have uh, received data from CEOs uh, from 2017, uh, COG optimized uh, radar data, so it's S1 for uh, PG and Vanuatu. And these are been currently being adjusted into our uh, pilot cubes for digital web testing. So what are some of the applications that we can use using the, the Sentinel-1 data and also the Landsat Sentinel-2 data? Uh, like I said, one of the major requirements for two part countries are agriculture uh, monitoring. So uh, this is a quick example of uh, sugarcane yield in uh, Fiji, which is one of the primary exports. And uh, using RBI, we're able to detect uh, the yield uh, of the, the cane, and you can see it's consistent with the harvesting period, uh, June to October of the crop. And we want to extend this methodology to other things such as uh, species detection and also uh, monitoring pests. Uh, another quick example would be land cover change detection using NBDI, NEBI, uh, using uh, L8 and S2. So we can uh, Look at uh, land cover and land use detection over a period of time. Uh, another one is uh, water body change detection and flooding. Flooding is a major issue for our urban areas in our hospital and countries, uh, in the population of floods, due to tropical cyclones or heavy rainfall. So, this is a very good analysis product for our disaster response team to see look at the extent of flood and the impact they would have on, uh, on buildings. Uh, illegal fishing, uh, we did some experimentation in Vanuatu of using uh, SAR data for fishing vessel detection. Uh, the limitation we faced was that uh, we were not able to detect uh, vessels easily, less than 14 meters, so more research is required in this area. Uh, we use uh, S1 or LS data to have a strategy for detecting 
uh, illegal fishing boats. Uh, again, common requirement that we get is a uh, postal chain inspection. So uh, we're able to do that using the S2 and L8. However, as you know, one of the requirements for uh, uh, doing this kind of uh, analysis is uh, up to date uh, uh, tunnel elevation data. And uh, sometimes it's not possible to have tide gauges deployed in all the places we want to do this kind of analysis. And the global models are too high resolution, of course, for us to get really good results. So, uh, uh, it's another example why in situ uh, deployments of uh, instruments is also important to validate some of the uh, uh, reservation data sets, uh, such as like deployment of tide gauges. And you can see uh, right on the south side of the island, uh, the settlement there, about 80 people are being affected by uh, uh, sea level rise over the last five, eight, five six years. Uh, water quality is again an issue. Uh, uh, our atolls and islands face a lot of droughts. So we want to use. Uh, the indexes that are available to us by ODC to do water quality visualization and detect nitrates, chlorophyll, water color, and sediments across impacted areas. Uh, another uh, project that we are trying to retrofit into ODC is uh, the illegal uh, vapor gravel extraction monitoring. So we're trying to use methodologies such as the NPDI, EBI, and uh, water body chain detection to monitor local areas or identified areas to see what the impacts of illegal river extraction is and then also hopefully implement a long-term monetary strategy around this uh, isolated areas. So what's the status of uh, the pilot uh, cube at the moment? Uh, we have deployed the initial vessel uh, with the Landsat and Central 2 data indexed from uh, 2014 and 2015. We have received the SAR data, S1 data from uh, CEOs. So this is currently the uh, induction into the cube for Fiji and Vanuatu, covers all of the, the islands. Uh, we have equipped it with the, the EA notebooks and examples, and we're trying to rework them for the different use cases for Fiji and Vanuatu. So we don't have to start from scratch and we just take the lessons learned and the production will be blocked and tweak it for our needs. Uh, we are not expecting our leaders and our decision makers to use the notebooks uh, as is, but we'll uh, disseminate the products via the existing uh, spatial data infrastructure they have deployed uh, within the countries, such as Vanuatu, which is on GeoNode. And the alpha deployment is uh, being uh, uh, made available online and digital net has been deployed. So to summarize, uh, we are quite confident that ODC ecosystem and the central one data in particular has very high potential for a number of use cases in the past week. And then it can make, uh, uh, enable our leaders to make uh, really good decisions around forestry, agriculture, fishing, land monitoring, urban deformation, and also respond to uh, uh, some of our disasters such as uh, volcanic gas and earthquake. And flood. And uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah.